Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Cameras, we good? All right, uh, we're going to start with, uh, on everybody's left, Zeke Biggers, on everybody's right, Haynes King, and then we'll follow with um, Kyle Eford and Leo Blackburn, and then uh, Coach Key at the end. So uh, we'll go ahead and open it right up for questions for Leo, or for, I'm sorry, for Zeke and for Haynes. Um, if you have a question, please raise your hand so we can get you a microphone. Good. Kelly? Haynes, I know that this is an exhibition for the fans, and... and and you only played like a half, but kind of what was your takeaway from getting out in front of some fans for the first time this spring and, and getting to throw the ball around a little bit? Uh, it's always fun, especially in the spring, getting to showcase uh, what, what you've done, what you've been working on, uh, especially with offense, uh, with, with coming off from that season we had last year, like what have we improved on? Um, and after they <laughs> took me out, I was a little, a little mad. I wanted to keep playing, but... Uh, after that, I was like, you know, screw this. I, I'm just trying to go signal or something. I want to do something. Ended up messing up once. Got one of them screwed up. Messed my, uh, messed Leo up on one of them. But uh, other than that, I, I felt like it went pretty good, pretty smooth. And uh, a lot of our guys had fun. Uh, Zeke, you, you have a pretty much a whole new defensive coaching staff. Can you talk a little bit about the – what you guys learned new, what what's changes you noticed, and, and kind of how you feel coming out of spring with regard to kind of the progress you've made or, or where you're at? Uh, really, we made some um, big changes um, with the coaching staff. So uh, I love all them guys. Um, we uh, dialed up a new package, um, being able to have that four down, uh, me and Horace inside, mm -hmm. and Josh Robinson and Kevin Harris on the outside is definitely going to be a – uh, rec forced to be reckoned with this spring and this coming season. Uh, we had a lot of guys that stepped up in the program as well. So just seeing how the plays can develop us to make plays this season and this spring is definitely good. Yeah. Haynes, when, um, in the spring game, what are you looking for the most, to, whether you're trying to improve on something or <laughs> – like, what is it that your your focus is on during the spring game? Uh, this spring game, my, my focus was on completion percentage and, and turnover ratio. You know, uh, the the higher your completion percentage is up, obviously gives chances to, to more guys to, to make plays, get the ball in their hands, to make plays, get them in space. Uh, and then the turnover ratio, as long as that's down, more chances we're going to have as offense. And, and people seeing how explosive that is. Uh, hey, uh, King, just talk a little bit about the QB room um, today. I absolutely played well. Uh, Zach Pyron, uh, freshman, got in there. Uh, Aaron Filo was throwing uh, balls all over. Ben Guthrie had some really good uh, throws as well. Just talk about just the emergence of that QB room alongside yourself. It's growing every day, you know. Uh, we're all pretty tight. Uh, we all compete every day. It doesn't matter if we're bench pressing, squatting, uh, going to meetings. You know, we're all competing, uh, but we're having fun uh, at the end of the day. And um, those guys, all of them played well. From me, Pyron, Philo, to Graham, Guthrie, all of them. Like, it, that, that's just what it is. And, and heck, uh, who else got in? With Brody and uh, Colson Brown. Like, all of it, they're just showcasing their, their abilities, their talents that, that we've seen all spring, but not everybody sees on a daily basis, like going into games. Because at the end of the day, probably about 80% of, of games, there's only one quarterback that plays, you know. And uh, to get them out there and, and competing and, and showing what they can do is, is just, it, it actually puts a smile on your face, you know. Uh, and, and everybody rooting for them and, and seeing what they can do, it, it's, just, it's just a special moment out there. Uh, this one, this question is kind of for both of you guys. And, and Haynes, on, from your perspective, when you're looking at the defense, 
which defender is going is giving you the most problems when you're out there and then the same thing for you Zeke on the offensive maybe even on the line which which of the offensive linemen or offensive players are giving you guys the most problems um people giving me the most problems probably up front uh just basically because of I'm not looking at them I it's more of a feel and when those guys give you trouble and, and they're in your face or their arms are coming up, matching your hand, trying to bat the ball down. That stuff's hard and it gets frustrating because you're like, I got a man open, I throw it, I'm like, that's going to be money. And it gets tipped. and You know, you get a little mad. And that, that's probably the most frustrating right there. Just I'm those – yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those guys causing havoc and uh, you just got to find ways to get it over them, get it between their hands, whatever it is. Uh, just got to find a way. And yeah, for me, obviously – uh, this guy trying to chase him down every practice. It takes a lot of he, he's faster than it looks on TV. Um, then obviously Jamal Haynes, uh, shifty running back, low to the ground. So you gotta be patient, get there. And uh, up front, I say Weston and Joe Fusel definitely. Uh, they work well together, very experienced together. So definitely them two. On that same note, guys, um, who are some of the young players who you've seen build up into spring and then today? Uh, freshmen, newcomers, things like that, who, who've stood out to you guys the most in the spring? Uh, yeah. For me, um, Cade Adams, he stepped up a lot. We call him Spice, but <laughs> Spice Adams. Uh, I say Ayo had a um, pretty good day. And then on the back end, I like uh, Tajay, uh, number 15. He had a good day as well. And I say I like to see uh, Tay Seymour stepping up some more, too. He's doing good. Go. All right, Haynes, tell me about Chris Elko. And it, it's very funny to see him have, like, this huge day, and it's a guy that most people outside the program have never heard of. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It was fun. Uh, everybody was rooting him on. Uh, a couple of times I talked talked with him, and, uh, you know, he was kind of struggling mentally. You know, I want just need a chance, just want a chance. And for him to – for me to see that and for him to finally get it and uh, – he make the most of it. It's just out saying everybody, Elko, Elko. Every time he called it, oh my God, it was. <laughs> that, and then that uh, before the end of the half, that play, oh my God, he stuck the ball out, scored right there. Just ridiculous. That's just Elko right there. <laughs> Anything else, Chad? Haynes, what's the message to the team now, going into the summer, getting ready for summer ball? Uh, the first one is the standard, and we got to hold everybody to the standard. And the second one is details. Because we might have a good play called and somebody be open, but it's something just not happened. Well, now you got to go back and you got to look at details. Like, what was it? What, what made that, not, that, that play not happen? Because uh, at the end of the day, if you can make about four or five game-changing big chunk plays, you have a really good chance of winning that game. And uh, other than that, it's just details. I mean, we don't want to take losses offensively, uh, minimize the losses, minimize the turnovers, and uh, details fit into that. And then going into summer workouts is just holding the standard and, and, the, and accountability of, of what we are as a team. Anything else? All right, fellas, appreciate you. Thank you. Everybody's left. We have linebacker Kyle Leeford on everybody's right. We have wide receiver Leo Blackburn. We'll go ahead and open it right up for questions. Kelly? All right, Leo, it took three tries, but you finally get into the end zone. How did that feel? I know it's been a long, long road for you to, to get back out there in front of the fans. Um, it's a blessing. I mean, I, I, I've been patient all this time, a lot of prayers. Um, just waiting my turn. Just felt good. I wish I had the first one, but hey, I got in there. Kyle, new defensive staff. Uh, what did you see from from uh, from the guys today? Like, what were your impressions of uh, first action in front of fans? Uh, from the staff or from the from the team? Uh, staff and the way, or the fan, the, the the players and the way they reacted with the new staff. Oh yeah, I mean, so we, we talked about just having a response, you know, from the other scrimmages, but I would say like we're, we're definitely starting to get much more comfortable with the staff, you know. They're, they're definitely a good combination of player and football coaches. So, you know, it's rub, rubbing off on us good. They're good, good men, good men for us. 
Uh, you had a, a kind of really came on towards the end of the 2023 season, playing a lot more and, and kind of getting out there. Can you talk a little bit about your off season and what you were doing in order to, to kind of continue that? And, and, and obviously with the new staff, how, how you are going to continue that? Yes, I mean, me being a younger guy, um, the margin, the margin of talent is so small in Power Five football. So at this point, it's just all mental for me. So I mean, the biggest thing for me was just you know staying in the film room, just trying to just study, just studying the game, because I mean at the end of the day, that's that's what's going to set people apart in Power Five football. Leo, going back to you have Coach McKnight now, and and it's some different things going on than maybe like a year ago just what has that been like that transition working with him and, and getting in back into the offense it's been great um he knows how to keep, teach each kid how to get open their own way um he doesn't teach everybody everything he teaches everybody to their strength and um what they need to know to be a better player and develop them so it's been a good replacement i mean we all love coach Knight, coach mcknight um yeah that's it other questions Kyle, I was just curious how you feel like your comfort level is now in the defense after spring. I know, unlike the offense, you guys had a lot to learn and install and that kind of thing. Just what is your comfort level like now? Yeah, I mean, start start a little slow. Uh, you know, it's, the game is really all about confidence. So, I mean, when you're learning a new defense, don't have much confidence. It's, it's hard to play fast. But I was saying, I'll say that we, one we, one thing we did a good job of is you know s slowly stacking, slowly pro progressing each day. So. You know, we started, started getting to the point where I was much more comfortable out there. Like today, today I was feeling very comfortable, you know, in this new defense. Okay. Taj Butler had a pretty good day. What did you see from him today? Tajay? Ta Tajay, yeah. Yeah, so, so Ta Tajay's a ball player. He's a, he's a young guy. You know, he's, he's, he's showing us he can play ball. I mean, coming in as a freshman, I mean, at this point, you're really playing off instinct only. So, I mean, if you're showing, showing us good things off a of pure instinct, it shows you can be a good player. I asked the same question of, the, of uh, Haynes and, and Zeke as well. So I asked you guys, from, from your perspective, can you tell me who gives you the most trouble uh, on the opposite side of the ball when you're when you're out there facing facing them? Either one of you can take it first. Uh, I would definitely say Jamal Haynes or uh, Malik. You know, just situations like in practice. You know, it's being in the open field with them. You know, it's like it's it's a nearly impossible task to tack, tackle one of those boys in the open field, but. You know, it's seeing it every day. You know, it's it's helping us as a defense too. You know, we have to adapt to it, have to adjust to it, and we have to make those plays. So, I would definitely say Malik and Jamal. Uh, I wouldn't just pick one person because I don't think none of them give me any trouble. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, one person I point out is said the freshman really came along towards the end. Um, learned how to play play to his strength. A lot of hands. He, um, he's going to be a good player as long as he wait his time, be patient, and just stay ready. Okay. Go. All right, Leo, tell me about Chris Elko and just <laughs> seeing him today get to ball out. Um, just like Haynes said, I've, I've talked to him a lot, like a lot of frustration, a lot of I just want a chance. Um, feel like I'm a walk on, I don't get as much chances. I told him just, just stay down. Like the other day, I was like, you're making a lot of plays in practice, you're going to get your chance. Like, just be ready. You moving around. You you know every spot on the field. So just stay ready. And he came out. He balled. Like I told everybody on the team, I was like, that's the MVP for today. Hey, Tails, right here. Um, how fun is it just competing, um, you know, with these guys in the wide receiver room? Uh, you know, yourself, Eric Singleton, mm -hmm. uh, Malik Rutherford, just going out there every day competing with them and, and going up against some talented guys and being able to go out on the field and play with them. I mean, it's, it's very fun. You got to um, bring your A game every day because, I mean, it's a stacked room. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of competition, but, like, it's a bunch of love. Like, not, no arguing, no fighting. Like, it's all love. Like, we compete on the field in the locker room. We back to, like, just being big kids. So, it's a lot of fun. Anything else? All right. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. <sighs>